All right, today we're making a Procreate Dreams template, an animation template that can then be used again and again and again across as many logos, icons, or titles that you want. Maybe you want to reuse an animation for a new brand. You pitch a logo animation to one brand, they don't go for it, and you don't have to throw it all away, and you can reuse it for a new brand. Or maybe you have a large project or some personal branding, and you want to create reusable, cohesive animations across multiple assets. That's what a template is for. Like you can see, labeled here, you just throw a new logo in and everything still works. And this means you can actually just grab this animation template right here. It's linked in the description. You can support the channel and not have to build your own template all from scratch. Or you could grab that template and learn by following along. Okay, let's jump in. We're in Procreate Dreams, as you can see here, and you're gonna open up a new project. The settings don't matter a whole lot here because the concept of making a template really applies to anything, any sort of video and, and design thing in general. But we're gonna go with the widescreen video uh, movie format. And I'm gonna come up here and change my duration, if it's not already, to three seconds, because I'm just gonna keep this really short and sweet for you guys. Frames per second, we can leave at 30 frames per second. It's pretty compatible with a lot of different video footage. Okay, click empty. Let's drop in a logo. I'm gonna use the Apple logo right now as an example. Click open. All right, we've got our logo. Now stop. Don't do anything else. The key to templates is animating groups. Don't alter the actual logo layer, this actual logo track layer right here. We're gonna put this logo into a group and do all of our animation and motion to that group. We're gonna come up here to the timeline edit tool or the select tool, select the layer, tap and hold, and then tap group. So now that logo layer is in a group and we're not gonna touch that, we're gonna only animate the group itself. That's a non-destructive workflow. That way you can drop in a new logo and everything we do to the group still applies to that new logo. While we're at it, let's just label some things. Unselect the timeline edit tool, tap and hold, rename, and this is add logo here. This is logo. You can even choose a highlight color to make sure it's super clear. This is a group that we can touch. Now this does come with a few limitations, so let's just get that out of the way. Let's bring the playhead over top of the group, not the logo, but we're gonna be animating the group, remember that. And the only limitations are within the move menu here. Move and scale still work totally fine. We're gonna be using that a bunch but warp and distort don't work on groups. So they have to be applied to the actual content of the group, not the group itself. But if we come out here and look at the other menus, the live filters, all of these still work. We're gonna be using the opacity, the Gaussian blur, and you can always test out these other live filters here. And then obviously you can split or cut the, the group as much as you want. In the future, hopefully they add even more features to groups, because then that way we can work non-destructively. It just makes it easier to redo things and tweak things. The other thing that still works great with groups is clipping masks. So we're gonna add a track right above this. Come up to the draw and paint tool. I'm gonna be using the monoline brush a whole bunch. I think it's in calligraphy, monoline. And what a clipping mask is, is just draw a couple squiggly lines over your logo. This is just for illustrative purposes only. What a clipping mask is, is if you tap and hold on that layer, let's actually just fill the whole duration of that track. If you tap and hold and go to masks here, a clipping mask will then take that layer and apply it to the layer below it. So only things that are right above that uh, image are visible. And this is live, so we can paint right over top of this. And even though I'm drawing outside, only the things within 
that logo are visible. All right, so that's a clipping mask. We're gonna use that a bunch because the very first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna drag in black to fill this layer. Come back to here, fill the duration of that track, of the, the timeline of that track. Hold, and then come to mask, clipping mask, and as you've seen, that whole fill layer is now just applying to the logo underneath it. Right away, the next thing we're gonna do is label this. Let's label this logo color because if you want to change this at all, say you've got a logo that you want to be red and you drag in the red fill, let's see, it should work. Sometimes it's a little slow. There we go. I'm sure it's a glitch that they're gonna work out. But this is another non-destructive layer that is applying a color. The actual logo itself isn't red. So you can even come over to the layer here and uncheck that fill and the original logo is still visible because remember it's within this group. It's safe inside here and all of the edits and animations we're gonna do, we're gonna do on top. Let's change this back to black. Let's also highlight this. Now I'm gonna make this pink because it's an optional change. You can change the color if you want or you can just leave it the way it is. So that's, that's the way I'm organizing things in my head. And that's essentially the structure of a template. Now let's actually animate this. My idea right now is that we're gonna have this logo kind of start really small and pop in and then bounce into place. And then to close it out or make it disappear after, I'm just gonna have it fade out. And I'll show you some fun little techniques to make that fade a little more professional. So to do this, we're gonna start by creating our first keyframe. You can do that by tapping the playhead Go to move and scale, and let's scale this down to as small as we want it. I don't want it to be like Star Wars where it starts really small in the distance. I want it to just kind of cut in and be somewhat small as it's co coming in. Um, so that'll be our first keyframe. And then right away, we're gonna overshoot the size a little bit. That way it'll have a bit of a bounce. It'll go past the scale that we want it to land on. And then we'll have it land at its final scale, kind of right around here. Apple <laughs> tends to keep things small and refined. So let's see how this looks. A little slower than I want. So I'm gonna pull some of these, these keyframes in it's kind of hard for you to see it actually pop in right now because we don't ever see it not there. So within that three seconds, I'm gonna actually drag and hold everything and slide it over so that the animation doesn't actually start until we're already in. So you, you have a little bit of a blank frame. And that gives us a better idea of what this motion's gonna look like as the logo appears. Now, one thing that I'm noticing, let's just loop this section right here, is that everything is really uh, gradual. All the motion is easing, um, and that's because they apply easing auto by default to keyframes and dreams. So if you tap and hold and expand these, you're gonna see X, Y positions. I'm not keyframing anything here but I'm keyframing the horizontal and vertical scaling. And if we s tap and hold and set the easing, I don't want any easing on this first keyframe because I want the motion to be already moving forward. It's as if this just popped out of nowhere. It's not slowing to a stop. Um, so we're gonna go with linear. That's just a straight gradual motion graph. Um, if you're familiar with After Effects or keyframing in other motion design programs, you'll be familiar with these graph editors. So now when we watch it, let's see how that feels. But now, since we don't have that gradual start, everything's a lot slower than I want. So let's collapse this and pull the keyframes in even more. I want this to be a quick and snappy pop. Let's exaggerate this keyframe even more. So all we have to do is 
bring the playhead to this keyframe, pull it out even more, and let's see how that feels. I could even drag it out a little bit longer. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add one more overshoot to this so it really feels bouncy. So I'm gonna pull this last keyframe, which is the, the final resting spot. And I think that final resting spot, I'm gonna make it a little, tiny bit bigger. Might need to pull it out even more. The frame before that keyframe, we're gonna make it just a tiny bit smaller. That way it goes, you know, small and appearing, and then slowly kind of gradually gets to this keyframe, bounces back down, and then comes up just a little bit, almost like a bouncing ball. You can kind of imagine it coming towards you, towards the camera here. It's coming up and then it lands and sort of like bounces one last final time, but it's a slow bounce. Let's see how that feels. Gonna just tighten some things up. It takes a lot of trial and error to get the motion right, but that's feeling a lot better to me. Just to be sure, because I really, I, I really don't know what the default easing is. It feels like it's not perfectly linear that they're adding a little bit of easy ease to some of these keyframes by default. But just to be sure, I'm gonna have these frames all ease in and ease out. Set the ease, ease in, ease out. Set the ease. You can see how it's applying to the motion afterwards. Ease in and ease out. I'm gonna set it for this too, ease in and ease out. And then this final one. All right, now let's watch it and feel how the motion is. All right, I like that. I guess a better analogy is not as much a bouncing ball for this motion, but more of like a slingshot or a sort of springy spring that kind of, you know, you pull it back and then you let it fly and it sort of gradually comes to rest in the middle. You could add as many keyframes as you want if you want it to keep bouncing. But to me, this simple and refined makes it fun and bouncy. We're gonna collapse these. You could always go to this large keyframe and you know scale it back a little bit if you don't want it to be so exaggerated you know that's a little more subtle now let's make the logo disappear i'm gonna shorten this up we're gonna hold it for a couple seconds and then right around the let's say the two second mark that's when we're gonna start having this logo fade out bring the playhead to the group itself if you're below the group it's gonna adjust or add more keyframes to the motion, but we're gonna add a new keyframe to a new action and that's opacity. It's gonna start at 100% opacity, so we can just move on from there and we've got a keyframe right here. And then drag the playhead over, tap and drag the opacity down to zero. We've got the logo fading out. Now one thing we can do, again, to make things a little more polished and professional is not just a basic plain uh, fade out, but we can actually come back up to this uh, motion layer. So you'll see the icon on the playhead change and we can tap to add a keyframe here. And then as it's fading out, we're gonna have the logo almost come closer to the camera. So we're gonna scale it up you can't really see that, so let me show you back here. We're gonna scale it up, and it's as if it's fading, but it's moving towards the camera as it's fading. Maybe the camera is moving towards the logo. That's scaled up, and you kind of see that right here. I'm gonna move that keyframe all the way to the end. And let's watch that. So similarly, they're adding some sort of ease to the motion here because I can see it almost slow down at the end here. Um, and I don't want any ease on the end. I want a little bit of ease at the beginning because I don't want the motion to just start abruptly or the, the fade to start abruptly. But at the end, you want it to feel as if the motion's still carrying through. So this end keyframe, I'm gonna tap and hold, expand, and I'm gonna make sure the easing is set to linear. 
so that there isn't a gradual stop. Set the easing to this one as well, to linear. That way I've got both the, the horizontal and the vertical axes um, adjusted. We can tap and hold and collapse that. And then the same thing here, we can actually just tap and hold, set the easing, and I don't want that transparency to slow down. I want it to kind of carry through, if that makes sense. I'm gonna move all these keyframes over a little bit so we can actually have a few seconds of blank screen afterwards. And that feels more like the logo is kind of fading into the camera or fading out as it's scaling up. I also really like to alternate some of these actions. So maybe you bring the opacity in a little bit and that way the keyframe of the opacity uh, fade doesn't start until after the scale already starts and that's pretty cool but I'd want the scale to carry on all the way through so you almost feel a little bit of that motion of it starting to go and then the fade all right last thing we're going to do to make this fade out even more professional a little more polished so we're going to add one more effect to this bring it to the the beginning here i'm going to tap the playhead go to filter and this time gaussian blur so now we have a keyframe here we're not going to do anything to that keyframe but as the logo begins to fade out we're going to have the logo also begin to blur out and this is a bit of an insider secret that I feel like really takes simple fade outs to the next level. It's really not that hard to do, but not a lot of people think about it. Let's pull that keyframe to the end and now let's watch it. See, that's pretty cool. So before it was fading out, but you could still see the crisp edges of the logo. Instead, this blur is making it feel a little more realistic. Again, you can adjust where that blur comes in. Maybe you want the blur to start a little earlier so you can move that keyframe around and check it out. But this alone is pretty cool and a pretty useful template. We've done a whole bunch of work and it would be a shame to have to redo this every single time you do a logo animation like this. So it's nice to have this templatized, but that's not enough. Let's add some hand-drawn animation to really sell this popping motion. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add another track above everything. You can always tap and hold to reorder these tracks. And to really sell this pop animation, we're gonna draw some little lines that explode out. Bring the playhead to this new track, open the draw and paint tool. I'm gonna use black for these strokes. And using the monoline brush, let's just see what it would look like if we drew some really big, yeah, I like that, some really big little strokes that come out kind of like this. All right, you can always plan things. As you can see, as soon as I started drawing, it created a new layer right here. And what's nice about the new updates is it didn't fill the entire duration. As soon as you drag over and you draw a new layer, it creates a new frame right here. Um, so I have actually started animating just straight in the timeline view instead of pulling it out to the flipbook view. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a pop animation. Let's undo this. Now these pop lines, I kind of want them to start coming out of the logo somewhere near the max size here. And we can always move things around and adjust. So let's start by drawing as straight of a line as possible coming out of the top here. Eventually, I'm sure Procreate will add the whole uh, hold to draw a straight line thing. Uh, but for right now, we've got to keep things as steady as possible. They have added some preferences ah, right here, pressure and smoothing. So you, what I've, so you can see I've boosted up, let's boost it even more, the stabilization because I know I'm just going to be drawing a whole bunch of straight lines and that way this will look as smooth as possible. The reason why I'm going kind of long with this one is because I want the motion to be really fast and in animation it's called smearing, the motion is kind of smearing up 
So even though it could be like a little dot that's just like popping out, now go to the next frame and my onion skins are turned on. If you need to adjust onion skins, you tap the playhead here and you can edit the onion skins here. This next frame, I'm gonna do it a little shorter and like halfway up, but it's gonna end a little further up. And then we're gonna do a couple more frames, but they're a lot shorter and are almost at the point where they're just a circle. Let's do one more. One last one. And you know what? We could scale this brush down, zoom in here, and do one more little circle at the end because I feel like that's gonna look pretty smooth. All right, there we go. So now you can see kind of with the motion how much that stretch at the very beginning or how much, not the stretch, it's smearing here, how much the smear or that longer line really sells the speed of the pop. We're gonna work smarter, not harder. Grab all of these, tap and hold, and turn them into a group. Come out of the select tool, rename, and let's call this pop. All right, now we could always just, you know, add a new track, come up here, go to our draw tool, and keep drawing more of these all the way around. But as you can see, it's kind of hard to keep things consistent, make it look really clean. So instead, let's undo that. We're gonna check a couple things. Let's make sure that this layer is in the center. So select this pop group, not the individual frames, but the group itself, and make sure it's dragged over a little bit. What you can do is tap and hold with your other finger and that's gonna enable snapping. So that's the center right there. And then we're also going to adjust the anchor point because the anchor point used to be right in the center and now it's over a little bit. So we're gonna move it over and also tap and hold and that brings in snapping. We're just gonna put it right in the center of this logo. And what that does is we can now duplicate this pop layer, select the new layer, tap the corner, and rotating handles appear. And now we can literally rotate these all the way around. And again, tap and hold with your other finger and you can snap it perfectly to the 45 degree angle. Duplicate, drag it up to make a new track, make sure it's lined up, tap the corner, tap that rotating handle and snap it to the 90 degree angle. May need to pull it in just a little bit. If your anchor point is off, adjust that anchor point again, just a little bit. Duplicate, drag it to a new track, select that new one, and so on and so forth, all the way around. And now, look how much time we've saved. The one thing I couldn't find is a guide or a way to turn on guide lines or guide rulers. So I actually have something that I grabbed online. If you wanted to, just to make sure everything is super lined up, these horizontal ones, I might pull in just a bit. Turn that guide off. That feels pretty awesome. Now let's select all of these pop groups. These have frames inside of a group and now they're gonna be inside another group. And let's rename it pop animation. Gonna make the highlight color red because I don't want other people touching this part. This takes a lot of work. If you don't want to mess up this pop animation, you want to leave this layer alone. If you do need to scale the whole group down or, or up at all, you can totally do that. And I'm just going to bring everything in just a little tiny bit. One thing that I did in my animation that's 
not completely essential, is I kind of alternated the motion of these a little bit. So I dragged out this group and then every other pop, I had it start just a hair later. And if you watch it back, that just makes it feel not so perfect, not so exact. And often it's the imperfections or the way you kind of stagger things that really brings things to life. So now let's close up this group and you've done it. You've made a template. Let's double check now what things we might need to do if we bring a new logo in. We're gonna go to the add logo here group. We're gonna open it up and we're not gonna touch the group. We're going to replace this drawing layer here. This has the actual logo. Bring the playhead to the beginning. Find your logo either in your photos or your files. And let's drop in the Instagram logo. Now, right off the bat, I want it to have its actual color. So let's come up here and turn off the logo color layer. I don't need that clipping mask for this specific logo. And if we scrub through, oh, the scale is super off. So this is what we'll actually do to the drawing layer here, not the group, because we don't want to add any more keyframes. But on this layer, let's go to where the pop animations are kind of around here maybe the beginning of them. Yeah, and make sure we scale it down so that the max size never exceeds our animations. Yep, that looks better. And we can see that all of these black animation lines that we did don't look that great with the Instagram logo. And does that mean we have to redo all of these lines or do we have to go into the frames and redo the color? No, what's so great about this non-destructive workflow and templatizing things is now we can actually just add a new track right above it, go to the drawing layer, select the color we want and drag that fill in. But we're gonna now hold that layer, fill the duration, and turn this into a clipping mask. And now those animations are matching the logo. And we can even take it a step further and draw on this clipping mask layer. Let's make sure we label it. Animation color, highlight pink. These bottom lines here, I want them to kind of match the bottom color of the, of the logo. So let's find an airbrush, a soft airbrush, and bring in some of that color. I actually want to grab a bit of the pink too and bring some of that pink color here and to the side here. And oh, I lost some of my yellow. The colors of the animation are now matching the logo. If you want to see what we even did, you can undo this clipping mask, go to none. And all we did was added a bit of color to that fill layer. So that's what this layer looks like on its own. But as soon as you turn it into a clipping mask, it'll apply to the layer below it. And now if we watch back, it looks super dope and we can always change it to any logo that we want. Let's try a couple of the other logos. Scale this down, all green. Nice. So Starbucks works great. Pull that in. The YouTube logo actually looks really dope. Now, before we close things up, let's make sure we clean up the project. I'm not gonna keep this guide in here. So let's delete that, delete this extra track. If we're making this a template, we wanna make sure it's super clean and organized. I'm gonna have this animation color layer extend the whole way. That way, if somebody does add more, uh, more animations, they can. And of course, we need to make sure we name Let's call it pop logo animation template. You can see I've tried this across a whole bunch of different logos. Crocs looks pretty good. Mickey D's. Now, if you want to export, you can come to share right here, video. You can export the Procreate Dreams project itself. And that's how I've made this available as a template. 
Again, linked in the description. You can download that for yourself if you want to follow along or use my animation in your own projects. And that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Templates and non-destructive workflows in general are super powerful, super important to learn. And that's what's so nice about Procreate Dreams. We now finally have groups. The regular Procreate, it had groups, but it was groups per frame. And this is a group throughout the entire track that you can edit. If you have any suggestions for what I should animate next, feel free to leave a comment down below and stay tuned for another video coming soon.